Ukrainian fighters continue to destroy Russian troops in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. Marines showed new footage of successful hits on enemy targets. Kursk region. Russian generals send their elite soldiers to slaughter. We constantly do our hard work, reads the caption to the published video. The video was released by the 36th separate Marine Brigade named after Rear Admiral Mikhail Bilinsky. The video, in particular, shows the destruction of Russian military equipment and infantry. Recall Russia is also deploying FSB special forces against Ukrainian defense forces in Kursk Oblast. Reports indicate that special units of the FSB are engaged in combat in Kursk Oblast, suffering casualties. The death of any member from these elite units significantly impacts the FSB, which previously faced its largest losses during the Beslan tragedy in 2004 when 10 Special Forces operatives were killed. An FSB source noted that the primary mission of these units is to detect and neutralize enemy reconnaissance and sabotage groups. With a state of emergency declared in Oblast, authorities have turned to the special services, indicating a decision by the FSB to deploy elite fighters against perceived Ukrainian saboteurs. However, the source cautioned that in a conventional conflict involving heavy weaponry, these special forces have limited chances against a regular army. Another source close to the FSB stated that the fight against Ukrainian saboteurs does not align with the FSB's Central Security Services operations, suggesting that the current counter-terrorism framework is unsuitable for the situation in Kursk. Recall on August the 6th, Ukrainian forces made a lightning push into the region, seizing villages, taking hundreds of prisoners and forcing the evacuation of tens of thousands of civilians. Russia was caught unprepared by the offensive and reportedly is drafting conscripts to repel some of Ukraine's most battle-hardened units. Russian state media fell into line, showing evacuees queuing for aid or donating blood, as if the events in Kursk were a humanitarian disaster and not the largest attack on Russia since World War II. A top Iranian official pledged his country's unwavering support for Lebanon after talks Friday with Lebanese leaders on the ongoing war between Israel and Hezbollah, which came as the United States continued actively pushing both sides to agree to a new ceasefire deal. Ali Larijani, an advisor to Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, said he hoped circumstances would soon improve in Lebanon so that displaced people could return home. The main aim of our visit is to loudly say that we will stand by Lebanon's government and people, Larijani told reporters after separate meetings with Parliament Speaker Nabi Berry and caretaker Prime Minister Najib Mikadi. The U.S. has been trying to broker an end to the fighting between Israel and Hezbollah, which came as the 13-month war with Hamas broadened in September into southern and eastern Lebanon as well as Beirut's southern suburbs. Both Hezbollah and Hamas are backed by Iran, and Hezbollah began firing rockets into northern Israel the day after Hamas' surprise attack into Israel on October 7, 2023 ignited the war in Gaza. According to reports in Lebanese media, U.S. Ambassador Lisa Johnson has handed over a draft of a proposed deal to end the Israel-Hezbollah war to Parliament Speaker Nabi Berry, who has been leading the talks representing Hezbollah. A Lebanese official confirmed Friday that Johnson visited Berry but refused to say whether a draft was handed over. Another Lebanese official confirmed that Beirut has received a copy of a draft proposal that the U.S. sees as suitable to end the Israel-Hezbollah war based on UN Security Council Resolution 1701 that ended the war in summer 2006 between Israel and Hezbollah. The official did not give details other than to say Israel was insisting that some guarantees be included. Both spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak to the media about the ongoing talks. The U.S. Embassy refused to either confirm or deny the reports. Larijani flew in Friday from neighboring Syria where he held similar talks a day earlier with President Bashar Assad. Syria's state news agency said Assad and Larijani discussed the ongoing aggression on Palestine and Lebanon and the necessity of stopping it. In addition to supporting Hamas, Iran is a main backer of Hezbollah and for decades has been funding and arming the Lebanese militant group.
Israeli airstrikes on Thursday hit sites in Beirut's southern suburbs, setting explosions between buildings in the area known as Dahia. Israel said it was targeting Hezbollah facilities and interests after issuing evacuation warnings prior to the airstrikes. There were no immediate reports of casualties. On Wednesday, an Israeli airstrike on an apartment building in the town of Aramaun, just south of Beirut, killed at least six people and wounded 15 others, Lebanon's health ministry said. The state-run national news agency reported that there were children missing after the strike and it wasn't clear if they are under the rubble or were transferred to a hospital. There was no warning issued before the strike, and it was not clear what the target was. There was no immediate statement from the Israeli military. Israel has also been striking deeper inside Lebanon since September as it escalates the war against Hezbollah. Israel forces invaded South Lebanon on October 1, causing widespread destruction in border villages but making little advances on the ground inside the country. Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when Hezbollah began launching rockets across the border in support of its ally, Hamas, in Gaza. The conflict escalated beginning in mid-September. Israel has launched a widespread aerial bombardment of Lebanon and a ground invasion that it said is intended to push Hezbollah back from the border.